I like to call this uh, November 13th Council regular meeting to order. At this time, let's rise for a moment of silence. And at this time, we have Pastor Harry. Where are you? You wanted to say a few words? Usually I do it, but I'll give you the honors and opening prayer. Thank you. Amen. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear loving Father, first let me say thank you on behalf of all who gather here today. Thank you for your many and abundant blessings. Thank you for the ability to be involved in useful work for the honor of bearing appropriate responsibilities. Thank as well for the freedom to embrace you or the freedom to reject you. Thank you for loving us. In the scriptures, you have said that citizens ought to obey the governing authorities, and you have established those very authorities to promote peace, order, and justice. Therefore, I pray for our mayor, for the various levels of city officials, and in particular, for this assembly council. I'm asking that you will graciously grant them Wisdom to govern and mean the conflict, interests, and issues of our times. A sense of welfare and true needs of our people. Confident in what is good and fitting. The ability to work together in harmony even when there is honest disagreement. Personal peace in their life and joy in their tasks. I pray for their agenda set before them today. Please give an assurance of what will please you and what will benefit those who live and work in and around our beloved city of Bristol Borough. In your glorious name we pray, amen. 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 Want to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Torek, you want to stay here? Stay here right here? Okay. Whatever you want to do. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's okay. That's okay. That's why I helped you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, like I said, my name is uh, Pastor Harry Torres. I'm a pastor here on 13. One actually wrote, and the senior pastor there. Um, as you can see, my main language is Spanish, so my accent is very uh, strong. Okay, I lived in Puerto Rico for 20 something years, and it's it's great because I just walk in, I saw my first neighbor in in, in, in Bristol Borough sitting here, and and that was great. So our church is leading the efforts of of uh, providing the um, most needed. Uh, provisions to Puerto Rico. Um, since the hurricane, you know that Puerto Rico has been hit very hard. Uh, we got 3.5 million Americans in need right now, in need of electricity, running water, food, um, plenty of needs right now in PR. And I want to thank uh, Ralph for the opportunity and, and Betty, she, you've been amazing, you'll be a great help to our community and our efforts. So right now, uh, we were able to secure um, a sponsorship from the United States Global Leadership Council to send 40 containers to Puerto Rico. Yes. So we were able to secure that sponsorship. and We have been able to send around 20 already to Puerto Rico, plus uh, bring an airplane uh, to take people, sick people out of Puerto Rico. We have uh, bring around 15 people to Miami. And we have done a lot in the last two months, you know, in behalf of, of the people here in the United States to help Puerto Rico. But the issue is that right now we have so much support, especially from the people from Bristol Borough. Um, the, the people from Bristol Borough, they have come to us and help us in a big way. Big way. It's been amazing. Their support has been amazing to the point that we have right now uh, around provisions to to fill out 65 containers, wow. 65 containers. 
and that's thanks to you know everybody here in the borough, people around the borough um, that spread the word around, and and you know it's been amazing. The support has been unbelievable, and we want to say thank you uh, in behalf of our church and our community uh, for for you know uh, to the people of Bristol uh, for their support. So right now we are in the in the. Um, with the situation that we got a, a sponsorship for 40 containers, but we have to move the rest of the containers to PR. Um, and we're looking for, uh, if anybody knows, or you, you are interested, you need more information, sponsorships, people who might be willing to sponsor a container or give us some money so we can bring the rest of the containers to the island. Uh, we, got, we, we, we have been able to get a sponsorship right now for around five containers. Four of them are getting filled out tomorrow, and they're going to be shipped on Friday. Okay. okay? Uh, um, in Puerto Rico right now, we got three, con three containers at the port that they're going to be picked up this week. Okay. Each container is free 53 footer, and they can bring around 60 to 65 uh, thousand pounds of, of help. So right now, the island is, is, is in, in, in need. And, and any of you who wants to learn more about our project, you got any uh, questions, ideas, uh, we, we take any suggestions right now, amen, because we want to get this done. What is the cost per container? It's around $4,000 from our warehouse to their place in PR, okay? Uh, one of the issues right now is a lot of people have questions about the government and then keeping the containers. Uh, with the organization that we're working, we were able to secure a certificate. It's called Humanitarian Claim Certificate. It's by the State Department and Homeland Security. That means that our, um, our provisions are already um, um, approved by Homeland, so they cannot touch our provisions. We can get in and out of the port with no problem. Number two, we're working directly with the community. How we do this? I went to Puerto Rico. I drove to Puerto Rico. I drove the whole uh, 14 towns in four days. So I saw firsthand the need. Okay? So we decide to work with nonprofit organizations. What they do, they go the, uh, uh, the day before, they go house by house, check in their needs of the people. Then the next day, with a list of needs, they go back to the houses and provide whatever they need for a week. So that, those are the people that we're working with. And um, uh, so we're, we're not working directly with the government. We're working more with the communities through the churches and nonprofit organizations. So thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you, Betty, for your help. And, and we're not the only one doing this. There's a lot of people in Bristol working towards helping Puerto Rico. And we really appreciate uh, your time and this opportunity to come here today and, and talk about what we're doing. And thank you for everything you're doing. Right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. We got a website. It's www.arribaprproject. www.arrib, as a boy, a PR project. And we are located at 1301 Etchley Road, Levittown, PA. Our phone number is 215-945-6150. Five zero, okay, six one five zero. Uh, so you can call us. You can go to the website. There's plenty of information. We got some proposals also here, and we got some brochures. If anybody want more information about our project, we are more w willing than that to answer your questions and, and whatever wants to help. We're open. Uh, uh, we receive you with uh, uh, open arms, okay, in this project. Oh, in español, perfecto, es más fácil. En español, that's easier. Okay. Uh, gracias a todos por recibirnos. Aquellos que quieran más información sobre nuestro proyecto, nos puede seguir en www.arribaprproject.com. Estamos en el 1301 Edgley Road, Levittown, Pensilvania. Y nuestro número de teléfono es el 215-945-6150. I know that everybody here in this room understood what I said, right? <laughs> So, gracias a todos, bendiciones, y Betty, muchas gracias a usted también. Thank you, Rolf. Thank you so much.
Anything we can do, Harry, you know that. Thank you. And on that note, I just want to go back to saying that um, we had a fundraiser, um, and it was bigger than we thought it would be. We started out um, doing a fundraiser to help different organizations, but once Puerto Rico was stricken with this storm, everybody that was participating agreed that the money should go to Puerto Rico. And up to date, we've raised over $20,000. And I think that's amazing. That shows what this town is doing. Um, I have a plaque to read, but I forgot it. So I'll bring it in December. Uh, they are telling me that Bristol Borough has raised the most money so far. So. Thank you to everyone, and thank you, Pastor. Uh, okay. Brady, do we have a check here for Ellen? I have it. You have it? Yeah. All right, at this time we want to bring up. <laughs> I want to make sure we got the check. <laughs> Mr. Dillon's been out sick. That's why. Yeah. Right, yeah. You could have handed her something she would have cared. Maybe I have a lot of money coming my way. <laughs> Um, as everybody knows, Ellen's always been involved with the parade, and every year we look forward after Thanksgiving. That's one of the best parts of Bristol. We do the tree lighting on Friday, which has gotten bigger and bigger every year. Then on Saturday, we all get together, and we all have a great time watching the parade. And this is a group of volunteers that without them, we probably wouldn't be having a parade. So on behalf of Bristol Borough, the council, the mayor, and the taxpayers, we'd like to give you this donation so you can continue with our parade and making it what you do every year better and better and better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This time we're going to bring up the Christmas Parade Committee, so Ronnie and uh, Joanna. You mean the Christmas tree lighting? No, the Christmas uh, tree lighting. Oh, the tree lighting. The tree lighting. The tree lighting. <laughs> yeah, that would be the Christmas tree lighting. Tree lighting. <laughs> um, I'm Ron Walker. I'm here with uh, Joanna Snyder, and we co-chair the uh, Christmas tree lighting ceremony. We're here tonight to let you know that uh, the tree lighting will be uh, Friday, November 24th at 6.30, and it'll take place in um, Riverfront Park. Um, it'll start at 6.30. Uh, we are going to have the uh, Bristol Riverside Theater, Keith Baker, and the uh, cast of uh, American Christmas Songbird, Songbook, Songbook. who will be uh, performing be performing. Um, last year we um, didn't have a very good night. The weather was not so good. Um, the sound system, we had some problems. Um, this year we can't guarantee what's going to happen with the weather, but we have our expert sound and lighting people on it, so it'll be a nice night. Uh, we asked people to gather in the park. Um, you'll be able to see the uh, performers in the park. You can also be up on Mill Street. This year you'll be able to hear it, but you won't be able to see if you're on the other side of the tree. Santa Claus will also be making an appearance, and he will uh, be in the gazebo, and um, children can visit with him. And Joanna, what am I forgetting? You're Anything? forgetting our special surprise. What is that? We have a special surprise that goes along with, normally we just do the, the park and we do the gazebo, but this year, thanks to the Bristol Riverside Theater, Andrew Deppin, who's the produ uh, production manager, and um, Tallgrass Entertainment, we're going to actually light up the whole park. We're going to um, light up the trees Aww. and go all along the back of, of 
the, the waterfront. So it's going to look very, very pretty. It's going to be magical. Nice. So, so when families walk through, it'll be very nice. The gazebo and Santa will be in the gazebo. So that's, a, that's our, our special. We've been wanting to do this for years, but it's very expensive. But thanks to the theater, they're, awesome. they're really helping us. Awesome. 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 Thank, Thank you. And the uh, Bristol Garden Club will be decorating the gazebo for Santa Claus. So a lot of groups come and help. The, the theater will be donating their time as well. Ron, who is your special sound system? Who, who's the special? Who's it's, doing? Uh, uh, Andrew from the theater. From the theater. From okay. The theater. I just they're to actually hooking I, into. Uh, sound they're bringing system. their cordless mics and. Well, well, they're I think promising. We should, I think we should acknowledge them. That's why I said okay. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. But it's also the first time we're going to get to showcase uh, the sound system that. that was installed for the yes. Small Business Revolution, mm -hmm. right? Which yes. is exciting. Well, also. we've been using it all I mean, summer. Showcase. Uh, this will be the first time we'll yeah. turn the speakers on on Mill Street. Though. Right. And for yeah. Christmas as well. So. Nice. Very good. I just want to say, people don't realize how much time and effort goes into just turning on a switch to light the Christmas tree. And I appreciate everything you two guys, you, you do to, to make this happen. It's just, you know, everybody shows up, the tree goes on. But, you know, starting the day after this, you start working for next year, just like the parade committee and all these other organizations. So it makes Bristol shine with people like you, so I appreciate your help. And a lot of pressure for that light to actually go on. Go on. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. right. <laughs> Again, thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. We hope to see everyone there. Thank you. Thanks. Well, our next discussion will be by Mary Jezewaldi with the historic Bristol Day. I think it had to be by far the greatest the Bristol Day this town ever seen. The so. best. That's what we wanted to hear. It was. Um, we agree. Uh, so we have a lot of thank yous. And uh, Jan is going to follow up with some plans for next year. So we'd like to thank Mr. Dillon and Mr. Salerno for making all the necessary arrangements to bring the gazella onto our beautiful docks. Um, Mr. DiGiuseppe and Mr. Salerno for supporting the gala on the gazella, which was a beautiful night the night before Bristol Day. Uh, the entire council and the mayor for your financial contributions and your support, Merle, Herb, Chief Henry, the police, and the fire police for making this day come off without a hitch. Um, your dock masters, Mike Russo and Tom Halkowski, uh, we had a huge crowd waiting to get on the gazella, and um, they just made everything work beautifully. We'd like to thank all the homeowners who opened their beautiful residences and uh, all the visitors just raved. The Mill Street Business Association, Association especially Train Pops for their generous donation of the Peanuts train set and for Jimmy Basin for helping us coordinate the efforts with the Mill Street Businessmen Association. Uh, the Grundy Library and the museum the King George Inn for their generous donation to the car show. Naturally, we have to thank our all-volunteer committee for Historic Bristol Day and all of the other volunteers who came out and made this a huge success. We'd like to thank the school district, the Riverside Theater, and the artists of Bristol as well. The word on the street is that we maybe had 12,000 people here in Bristol, which really made us happy. So I want to just end with a quote that I just happened to come upon today from Margaret Mead. And it goes like this, never doubt that a small group of committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. They certainly have changed our town. So thank you all. Thank you. for at least another year. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I want to start by saying thank you to Mary, our wonderful chairperson of this committee. She certainly led us very well. And Mary is, um, has done it for two years, and we will be having a new chairperson next year. 
but I they have big shoes to fill, mm -hmm. that's for sure. But at any rate, uh, I wanted uh, before I talk about next year, which of course we just started in January with our planning, but we do have some things on on the uh, agenda. But I wanted to also say thank you to Ann Walp, who took care of our vendors. Ann Walp also, uh, because of family problems, will not be doing that next year. So we'll be looking for somebody to coordinate the vendors, and that's a big job. Also, our grounds crew. And by the way, talking about grounds and helpers, anybody knows any able-bodied people to help us out on that day, we certainly could use <coughs> the muscle uh, the night before and the day of to put things out. So I'm just putting out that request. Uh, for Bristol Day 2018, uh, right, we'll start in January. With, it takes a whole year to plan for this event. Uh, but already information has been requested from State Representative Galloway and State Senator Tomlinson to bring in the Niagara, the state ship Niagara to Bristol. Now, we don't know whether that would happen or not, but the, the request has been made. From what I understand, um, I mean, it, there's a whole chain of, of events that have to happen, but if not next year, at least the request is in for a time. We, there are also other tall ships uh, from the U.S. Navy has tall ships, so a request for them has been made through Fitz, uh, Fitzpatrick's office. He also uh, requested from Brian Fitzpatrick for the U.S. military ban to come to Bristol. Mm. From what I understand is that there's a multitude of forms, so maybe Mr. Salerno will have to talk to you, but from what I understand, it's not easy. <laughs> but they're out there, and we're hoping to bring them in, which would, I think, really uh, do very well for the planning. So at any rate, I want to thank you as well for all that you have done. We couldn't have done it without the help of all of you here and all of your support. Uh, again, thank you very much. I just wanted to quickly read, uh, uh, there's a notification out there, they're on the chairs and they're from the parade committee. We would like all businesses, residents, groups, etc., to know that it is free to join our parade with a band, character, and group or float. We ask that you keep it within the season's holiday, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and all you have to do is go to the website at bristolboroughparade.org. Also, you can call the parade committee people, which is Ellen at 215-789-0177 or Linda at 215-788-5612, and it's free. So, I mean, <coughs> you still have time to get involved and be in the parade. Thank you. Okay, again, thank you for all your hard work and effort for, I, I wish, I'm amazed as of today how many vendors, I mean, they stretched almost the gals around a funeral. I mean, for, I never seen so many vendors on the street. It was a perfect day, but you gotta thank Mark too. He put up all them signs and everything. I know, I seen him out there, so. You forgot more. I'm giving you. I'm giving you credit, buddy. <laughs> did an outstanding job. She really did. I, I never seen so many. Jean, uh, where's Jean at? Jean, I'm sorry. Okay, Jean's here to speak about the oversight committee, the summer program. Thanks, Council President DiGiuseppe. Um, members of the Council, President uh, DiGiuseppe, Mayor Saxton, Borough Administrative Staff, ladies and gentlemen, um, here on behalf of the AOC, which is the Over Advisory and Oversight Committee. Uh, this is a group of volunteers that uh, basically has education as its primary focus here in the borough. It was a group funded by the Gandhi, Gandhi Foundation that continues today. Uh, it was begun back in 2010. I'm here tonight to report on our summer program, uh, which was, I think, very, very successful. The motto of the AOC is helping borough kids learn uh, to live and to lead. And we do this by providing year-round programs aimed at academic achievement and personal growth and development at three sites that we've set up here in the borough, one of which is at the elementary school, one of which is at the St. Mark's School, which is a new site, the other which is at the now Bristol Junior Senior High School. 
uh, over Wilson Avenue. And for programming, just go to Google uh, bblearningcenters.com. You can find a whole host of programs that are provided there. Uh, a little bit of background. Since uh, 2015, the AOC has spent $19,000 uh, in programming, year-round programming, that is. And this funding comes through our an annual Bristol Fall Classic and Jazz Concert events. A little, uh, little bit more about that later on. Um, this past year, it was our fifth consecutive year of partnering with council, not-for-profits, and businesses here in the borough to sponsor these camps. Um, these camps are open to uh, students in, in the borough attending uh, public, private, or parochial schools. Again, we had two camps, one which was at Snyder Girardi. The object of that camp for the younger kids is to stop the summer slide. Basically, keep the kids engaged uh, as much as possible. Um, it, it, the format is very, very um, um, uh, structured in the sense that uh, Thursday, Monday through Thursdays, from 8.30 to 1, 1 o'clock, uh, our children are taught by trained professionals uh, over at Senator Girardi. Um, we had uh, 155 students registered, and our daily attendance was 125 students. And I do want to just point out, FYI, uh, we, one thing we do, uh, we do insist upon is accountability. We ask parents to attend one one-half-hour meeting prior to the start of camp. And unfortunately, we had yet again some parents not show up for that meeting. So unfortunately, their students were not able to attend camp. And that's, that's a shame. Um, however, we believe that there needs to be accountability. We started this two, three years ago. And I, I really uh, appreciate council support on that, on that issue. If parents can't give a half hour, what, you know, where are we as a community? So I insist upon that. We insist upon it, and I appreciate your support on that. But to bigger and better things, we had 125 students attend, and they were taught everything through math and reading, and they had a lot of fun, too. Uh, just a couple of our partners, real quickly. The district uh, provided its building, staff, and bus transportation. Thank you, BBSD. The Archdiocese of Philadelphia provided lunches for our kids. Council, I can't thank you enough for your funding of trips. Understand that these trips for a lot of kids is about the only time they really get out of the borough. Uh, so we sent our kids to Neshaminy State Park in Trenton Thunder, and I understand that Police Officer Rivera turns a mean grill at Neshaminy State Park. <laughs> so it's a lot of fun. Families get together. My understanding is it's a real, real fun day. Uh, the King George is always there with T-shirts for the kids. We had the Franklin Institute, we had Grundy Library, um, and I do want to mention again that the police department was over visiting with kids and helped them, uh, I think, review new uh, safety features over at the docks and, and the pier. And also a new business, a new venture we did this year was Train Pops. We actually brought our students onto Mill Street just to try to you know, make the connection between school and community. So it was a good partnership. We hope to uh, make that a little bit better and bigger next year. One of the things we did, too, we started last year, was we did an assessment just to make sure what we're trying to do is move the academic needle. And I'm proud to say that for grades one through four, um, that assessment in math, 67% of our students progressed or stayed the same after six weeks. In reading, it was 66%. And we did some physical exercises in 78% of that grade cohort progressed or stayed the same. Again, stopping the summer slide. Uh, for grades five through seven, we had 58% on math, stayed the same or progressed, 61% in reading, and 81% in exercises. So again, I think it, it's helpful as funders that you should know we're doing what we said we're going to do, keep the children on grade level, even enhance that at, at times, too. And something this past year we, we introduced was theater for the kids. That was vocal, dancing, and um, interaction. So I thought that was a, a neat idea that we introduced this year. Another thing that we did do for the younger kids was um, credit recovery. Understanding that unfortunately some of our students are not able to pass through the academic school year. So we do provide a robust credit recovery program for our kids. And we had 10 students in grades 7 through 8 uh, complete that, that training. So they were able to actually, you know, uh, graduate if you will. Um, so I think that's important. And then on the high school level, we had um, 66 students participate in everything from garden club to credit recovery. Um, we also had a history and culture 
in our mixed program that we provided funding for. And this was, again, again, the idea of getting children out of the borough. Not that it's a bad thing to be in a borough, but they need to be see beyond 13 and, and whatnot, you know. Um, this program sent kids to the American Revolution Museum and, of course, the Grundy Museum here in Bristol. Uh, we had 25 students successfully uh, complete credit recovery from the high school level. Good. That's a big number, but, again, that's why the program is there. And last but not least, we had uh, 14 students, again, for your funding, as well as uh, the BBSD, AOC. We also, if, and this was the one program we did ask students to help fund a little bit. We asked students to pay $25, which they did. We had 14 students attend a lead and succeed camp over at Bristol Borough, uh, excuse me, the Bucks County Community College. And I'm told that our kids were the most behaved, most interested students there uh, over the course of the two weeks that they had the camp there. So kudos to our children and to the district as well. Uh, all in all, a very successful program. We had 191 children, if you're keeping count, um, between the months of mid-July through the end of August. Again, uh, trying to engage them as much as we possibly can to keep them on track. Uh, so when school starts in September, again, they're ready to rock and roll. Any questions with that then? Summary on the after school summer camp program. And as I mentioned, then, if I may, in the interest of time, uh, what we're able to do is because of events like the jazz concert in June and our, and our fall classic. Uh, this year we are uh, honoring uh, Mr. Bill Pezzett with his volunteerism here in the borough. And of course, you know, Bill's, uh, Bill's efforts are, are you know, legendary here as far as you know, small business revolution, raising the bar. So we're taking a little bit of time out on this Saturday to, uh, to promote and to honor Bill. Um, so the event, the Fall Classic this year will be over at number threes. Um, it's uh, an event from 7 to 10 there. Tickets are available at Ignoni's uh, and the tax office and as well as Great Ideas. Great Ideas by Ann, I should say. Uh, $50 prior to $60 at the door. Um, I'm looking for a real, real good night. Uh, make, make Bristol proud. Any questions with that? We hope to see everybody on Saturday. Thank you, Gene. Thanks, Gene. Thanks, Thanks for all your efforts. My pleasure. Thank you. And I think we have one more, apparently quick one, from Melissa from the theater. I don't, I don't think I'm missing anybody else, right? Hi. Uh, greetings. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Council, President, and Mayor, all. Uh, I just started at the theater as their interim managing director. Uh, Ann Cohen was uh, the managing director before, and she uh, said wonderful things about the town before she left for some other opportunities. And I am so excited to be able to join such a wonderful community here, especially at the Bristol Riverside Theater. Uh, I hope to see you all at um, our upcoming productions. We actually have a production that closes this weekend uh, called, called Quartet, and we're all very, very excited about the tree lighting. We've been talking, Andrew's giving me updates about that, so I'm very excited about that uh, coming up. And we do have an American Christmas songbook, which will run from December 7th to December 17th. For those of you who haven't seen the songbook performance before, it's a beautiful concert put together by our artistic director, Keith Baker. Um, we have our own in-house band and some beautiful <coughs> singers. You'll see some of their work at the tree lighting. Uh, as well as we've added this year a fundraiser that will benefit our Art Rages, which is our completely free summer camp that we offer. Uh, and that benefit is a reading of a Christmas carol that, again, our artistic director Keith Baker and his wife Joe Twist will read all of the Christmas carol characters. Um, that's one night only on uh, December 11th. So uh, please join us for some of those offerings uh, as well as we will be open during the tree lighting as well as during the parade. So if you happen to be downtown, you want to get your tickets for American Christmas Songbook or the fundraiser Christmas Carol, we'd love to see you. Uh, and thank you. Thank you for all the support that uh, you provide the theater. And thank you so much uh, to the town of Bristol for supporting us. We're really um, very happy and, and, and honored to be a part of this wonderful community. So thank you very much. Awesome. Okay. Not done yet. <laughs> I'll be finished by now.
to go into public participation. I think everybody here spoke. He said we'll finish by 9. <laughs> you, you missed it. Eight by eight. 9? Yeah. 9. 9.15, maybe. Okay. I saw a little card, a very little card. A little card. <laughs> um, good evening. I, I want to say this is so exciting. There's so many people doing so many good things in town. It's incredible. And, and I want to say about Saturday night, my name might be on that program, but really we're honoring everyone who does all of the things, all of the volunteers, and, and there's too many to name, but that's what it's really about as far as I'm concerned, and it's a, it's a worthy cause. We're trying to raise money for kids, so I hope everyone comes out. A um, couple, of, couple of announcements. First, I want to congratulate the borough crew, uh, the manager, yourself, chairman, for uh, the wonderful work they did to restore the wharf. Uh, and the fact that we were able to do it in-house, uh, how to be a cost savings, I think it speaks well of the skills that we have on our team, and uh, it's good. So uh, I just wanted to throw that out there. I know a lot of people were wondering when it was going to get done. I know we had engineering issues, but once they started, did a good job. I, I guess there's still some work to be done, but yeah, really good job. Down there again today. Yeah, really, really good job. Uh, second thing is Michael Gorman, uh, well, before that, the, the Small Business Revolution series is now over. They, they aired all eight episodes. And I don't know if we have it on our website or not, but if we don't, we should have the link to that. You know, we, we had about 100 people show at the community college on Thursday night to watch the last episode. It's a terrific episode. It, it just puts Bristol in such a good light. It's such a feel-good uh, uh, segment that I hope we all get a chance to watch it. So maybe if maybe if Matt can put it put the link to it on the website that we're might. not allowed to show it, I guess, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, we can yeah. show it. On our website? Yeah. I mean on our T V channel. We can show it we can show it at a council meeting. <coughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they want us they want exposure. So and it would be it would be worth doing. Yeah. Uh, the last thing is Michael Gorman asked me to, to just highlight uh, first of all, I want to congratulate Ron and Joanna and the borough for what you're putting together. Brace yourselves, your Christmas parade, your Christmas tree lighting, uh, historic Bristol Day, uh, the, the first Fridays, they're all bigger and they're going to be bigger and we need to learn to cope with that and, and to uh, capitalize on it and uh, generate some positive economic feedback for the town. But Michael asked me to say that so around the tree lighting, which is going to be 6.30 and then 7, uh, from 5 to 9, uh, Michael's put together a thing with some Mill Street business owners called A Very Borough Christmas. Uh, it's going to have, uh, they're going to have entertainment on every block, uh, a band, singers, and whatever on each block. And on Mill Street Crossing, he's going to decorate Mill Street Crossing and have activities for kids. So there's a lot to do for an hour and a half before the tree lighting and after the tree lighting for another probably two hours or so. So we'll make sure everybody knows that. It's called A Very Borough Christmas, and it's free. And uh, we hope all. That's it. four or after the tree lighting? It, it's from five to nine, so hour and a half let's, before. Let's, stop, let's not confuse everybody. From five. Okay, five o'clock. Very borough, very borough Christmas begins. You can do things along the street if you want. There's bands and there's there's activities for kids on Mill Street Crossing. Then at six thirty, everybody should be uh, at the tree lighting for what these guys are doing. And then. And what time is the tree get so we know? Is it getting lit at 6:30 or 7? The 6:30 is the music. The card the says 7. 6:30 is the chorus and the music, and then 7 is the lighting. So, the tree is getting lit at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. This way, people like, like they don't get there and say, oh, the tree's already lit. Mm -hmm. So from yeah. 5 yeah. o'clock until 7. There's activities. Well, the yeah, but, but I think by, by 6.15, people should start moving down to the tree lighting to take advantage of that. And, and then, and the show. right, and the show, and the show. And then when that's over, which would be about 7.15, I guess, um, there's still a couple hours worth of stuff to do on the street with bands, entertainment, and, and Mill Street Crossing. And there's also stuff down at the wharf mm -hmm. that's yeah. going to go yeah. on after the tree lighting, correct? Yes. Right. Be there until nine. Picture taking. I hope you start be hopping. All right. So, so there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. A lot going on. All right. And, and with the crowd, you know, part, part of this is to get people. The merchants want people on the street. The merchants want to attract. You know, it's a Christmas season. By the way, it's 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 Small Business Saturday. So that Friday night, that Saturday, uh, Michael has gotten them to remain open, which is a good thing. And uh, we're hoping that some people will support their local businesses. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.
Okay. Uh, I'm just going to go right into public participation. So anybody on this side of the room want to speak on anything? Anybody on, <laughs> anybody on this side of the room like to speak on anything? There's nobody left. That's cute. <laughs> that ends public participation. All right, before we get into our agenda, uh, we had a quick executive session in the back room to discuss some personnel issues that uh, may or may not come into play uh, during the course of next year. But myself, Mr. Catrochi, the manager, and Mr. Salerno, our solicitor, worked very hard on the budget. Are you guys done? Us? Sorry. That's all right. Worked very hard on trying to pass this budget with no tax increase. I know there was a lot of discussion about the local service tax, the current income tax. None of the man, I explained at the last meeting that the manager was doing his due diligence by advertising that in case we cannot balance the budget. So, again, I want to give the manager a special thank you for how hard he came in. He's been sick and he came in this weekend and finalized the budget to get it ready to go to the bookkeeper and to print so we can have budgets to pass out tonight to council. So it is a balanced budget. There's no tax increase. There's no local service tax. There's no earned income tax. So I think he did a great job. I want to thank you for all your work. Louie, I want to thank you for your input in the budget and meeting with the police chief, meeting with the mayor, meeting with different department heads to put this budget together really took a lot this year. So again, I want to thank you. The budget, Mr. Catrochi is going to pass out the budget to all of council. Take it home. If you have any questions, please email Angie, who are the manager before our December meeting. And again, it's a budget. so. Everybody un understands what's going on with the budget. Good job, bro. I don't have too much tonight, but uh, just one of the things I'd like to say, you know, we sit here and we listen at these uh, council meetings and we hear all these wonderful things that are going on in our town. It really makes you proud when you think about all the activities, whether it's Bristol Day, whether it's the Lions Club, the Rotary Club, the school. You know, it's a great town we live in. The other night I went to the... Uh, at the community college for the final episode to watch. And there's a great new tagline I think I'm going to start to use myself. I love welcome friend. I mean, that goes back into the 1800s. But the, the new tagline is come for the history, stay for the fun. And we are really a fun town. I mean, when you start to look at all the things that we're doing over the course of a year, you know, and ending like with our, our Christmas parade, Santa coming, all the events that we're going to have down on Mill Street uh, over the next couple of weeks. So uh, Bill's correct when you talk to a lot of different people from outside the community. I get calls every week from mayors and other people in the uh, other communities asking, what's coming up? You know, what can, what can you tell us? Maybe you can work with us. You know, and I know Ralph gets a lot of calls and so do other council people uh, asking the same kind of thing. So I'm very proud of, of being the mayor and being involved in this community with all the different things that we do. The only other thing I want to say is that item six on the agenda for tonight to uh, authorize the engineer to file 
a uh, grant application to install handicap curbing on Mill Street, Ratcliffe Street, and Market Street. I know Betty's leading the effort on that, uh, and all council supports that. I would just ask for you to vote for that, Chief and the uh, department. We've been looking at those intersections, and you know, when you look at First Friday and you see all that crowd coming down the street, you know, and they're trying to get across the streets there, it's very difficult. Or some of the crowds when they're coming out of the theater, you know, there's no stop signs there. So I think all all the efforts will hopefully come together in the first quarter of next year. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Just to get back to the budget and, and council, we discussed this. There's things in the budget that are, uh, for instance, the police, $59,000 in capital improvement money. And I'm just off the top of my head. We put that in there, but the money's coming out of capital improvement, not out of your police budget. But until this council authorizes that spending, just because it's a line item, it cannot be spent. And that's not only with the police, it's with all the departments in the borough. So although the money says, you know, police car, whatever's in there, same thing with public works department and all, they can't just go buy, so well, it's in there to buy a new lawnmower. Well, we want to make sure that at that point, when you go to buy it, council approves it. So I just want to make that clear to everybody. Anybody have any questions on anything, budgets or anything before I go to the agenda? Okay, number three on the agenda. President, motion to approve the council meeting uh, minutes of 11 6 17 accept the treasurer's report for september 2017 accept the police and dj's report for september and october of 2017 accept the fire chief's report for september and october of 2017 accept the inspection department report for september and october of 2017 and accept the public works department report for september and october of 2017 and accept the hard report and decisions for 10 30 2017. Second by Ms. rodriguez questions or comments all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Number four. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion for the approval of the preliminary final land development for 1201 Wilson Avenue Expiration, expires 1211-17. Wait, I have, to read, I have to read the rest. Whereas the borough of Bristol has received an application for approval of the preliminary final land development plan for the property located at 1201 Wilson Avenue, Bristol, PA, to renovate an existing building into new care facility, as well as to construct a three-story addition above the existing two-story building, construct a 5,500 square foot indoor pool addition to the rear of the existing building, to add a 1,000 square foot addition at the entrance of the existing building, all with accessory parking served by public water and public sewer in accordance with plan prepared by Dumac Engineering Project Number 58, dated June 5, 2017, last revised October 5, 2017, consisting of sheets 1 through 13, and whereas the Bristol Borough Council finds it to be the best interest of the borough to grant a final condition approval of the plan, subject to compliance with all the terms and conditions set forth for this resolution. Second by Mr. Pesson. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion. Um, the denial of the preliminary final waiver of land development for 200 Howe Street, which expired 11 17 due to the lack of progress and not complying with appealing to the Zoning Hearing Board for the various Fair instances required per the borough's engineer review letter, Gilmore and Associates, dated June 30th, 2017. I have a second. Second by Mr. Riccio. Questions or comments? Mr. Devine. Yeah, I just have a question. What, what exactly are they doing at 200 Howe Street that they are being denied? What were they trying to do? I'll explain it, Mr. Sorna. Yeah, they, I think they applied <clears throat> some almost a year ago, land development. They are Insta they want to install a loading dock on the front side of the building and also reconfigure uh, their parking. And uh, I don't know if they've lost interest in the project or what happened, they but they, they have not uh, submitted revised plans. 
and they have not applied for their zoning variances that are required and we've given them one extension and they still have not responded so it's recommend it was recommended by the uh, borough manager that we deny the, the application at this point they're free to reapply probably what I would recommend if they're interested in the project is they go for the variances first mm -hmm. and if they get the variances then apply for the land development and this can be done in several months if they're if they're interested they they may have lost interest we don't know but we just don't want it hanging out there yeah. um, and it's costing us you know our people's time and money uh, with our engineers etc thank you any other comments all those in favor? Aye. 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 Number six. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the engineer to file a grant application to install handicapped curbs on Mill Street, Tobacco <clears throat> Street, and Market Street. I have a second. Second by Mr. Riccio. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Before we adjourn the meeting, uh, again, get back to this budget. It's a balanced budget. Do you think it's possible that we could just meet on December 11th and have one meeting? Mm -hmm. And our, it's our Christmas meeting, so Rosemary will be here to sing and everything. Whatever little agenda items, we can meet maybe an hour earlier at 6. That would be good. <clears throat> get a little work session at 6 and then end that meeting and bring Rosemary and everybody to do our, our Christmas songs. Mm -hmm and get out of here. Again, if there's questions about the budget, you know, let's get them all answered. I don't want to deal with it in the last meeting of the year. December 11th. So we're going to meet our second Monday of the month, which is December 11th. So we're not meeting on the 4th. Oh, good. We're meeting on the 11th at 6 o'clock for an hour, and then we're going to go right into our regular meeting. Okay. Sounds good. That sound good with everybody? Yep. Yeah. Uh, meeting adjourned by Mr. Riccio, <laughs> second by Mr. Catrucci. Hello.